So, in recent years, the landscape of 3D content creation has been revolutionized by advancements in AI-driven generative models, and why companies like Nvidia, Google, Dreamfusion, and so on has made significant strides in creating some very interesting tools which have simply formed the basis of image and text to 3D model generation, these tools give a glimpse of what the future holds when it comes to generative 3D models and also using images and text to generate 3D assets for a wider community of users, and often they did grapple with challenges like slow processing times and limited capabilities. And while a lot of companies have actually tried to create some of these things, most of them are either closed source or just simply end up creating pseudo 3D perspective that uses textures to give a false rendering of what the 3D model should look like. And this is where the Honeon 3D version 2 comes in. Hunian 3D version 2 is an advanced large-scale 3D synthesis system for generating high-resolution texture 3D assets, and this is made available by the folks at Tencent, and these two promises to be a groundbreaking framework that addresses challenges of previous counterparts heads-on. And the best part, unlike present-day competitors, this tool is totally free and open source under the Apache 2.0 license, which makes it super easy for developers, researchers, and also creators to have an unlimited access to experimenting and also building upon this present technology. However, there's a little bit of a caveat, and that has to do with some territories. As much as this is free and open source, some territories are not expected to fall under this license. And this includes the European Union, United Kingdom, and South Korea, as it's expressly limited to these territories as defined below. So if you fall within this category, I would suggest that you take a look at this prior to using this tool. And one other cool thing is they've just recently released a Blender plugin which allows creators to generate 3D models right inside of Blender. And this we'll talk about in a bit. And for those who like to see how this works, they can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can take a look at how these actually work. So this tool currently has two foundational components, a large scale shape generation model, which is called the Hunian 3D Shape VAE, and also the Hunian 3D DIT, and there's also a large scale texture synthesis model, which is called the Hunian 3D Paint. And this shape generation model is built on a scalable flow based diffusion transformer, which aims to create geometry that properly aligns with the given condition of the image. And the whole idea is to lay a solid foundation for downstream applications, and the texture synthesis model itself simply benefits from the strong geometric and diffusion method, as this enables for the production of high resolution and vibrant texture map for either generated or handcrafted meshes. And this is totally different from what we have with version 1. As you can see with version 2, 3 billion model parameters have been used. This has about one minute of processing time and it can generate high resolution geometry alongside high resolution textures. For version 1, you can definitely tell things look pretty different. And for those who like to explore this and possibly use it, how this works is pretty simple. You can either go over to GitHub like we mentioned earlier, or you can go over to Hugging Face. So for Hugging Face, we're going to go over to version 2.0. That brings us right here. So to start exploring this, we're just going to click on demo and this is going to bring us right here where we can start exploring all of the demos that this has. So to any of those ones that you like, you can just simply go ahead and select them. Maybe for example, we would like to generate Santa, all we need to do is click, and then we can say we would like to generate shape only, or we would like to generate shape with textures. And once we click that, that waits for GPU to become available, it takes that GPU and start generating the 3D model. This does not require you to log in, but of course, if you do have an account with Hugging Face, you can proceed to go ahead and log in. So with this, we can now simply preview our 3D model and see what we have. And this looks really cool. Let's take a look at the generated textured mesh. So once we click on that, because we already selected generate shape and texture, we can see the generated texture mesh. Of course, there's a couple of, you know, cleanup that can be done for this, but for the most part, the mesh that we have here is looking pretty nice. If you'd like to download these and take that to a 3D modeling tool, you can simply go ahead and hit the download button and download this. Now let's go ahead and explore with a custom image. Now this image, I did screenshot it from the internet. This looks pretty cool. What we want to do is generate the shape and the texture. The maximum time for generation for this is about a minute and say 30 seconds. In some instances, this will do it under a minute. In some instances, this would expand the whole one minute and 30 seconds. Some other things to keep in mind is this, that if you go down to the advanced options section, you can choose the octree resolution. So you might want this to be 512, 384, or 256. Again, depending on what you want to do, you can go ahead 
and explode that. At the same time, you'll also notice that we have the remove background. This is just for this to be able to skin this entire thing and focus on the image. So with this set, we're just going to wait a bit and get this ready for us to start exploring. And there we go. So this is now available. You would notice something pretty cool. This did approximate the back. The back leg has been approximated. It looks pretty cool. There's also a pretty nice looking stuff right there. We can also see that we've got them eyes, we've got the nose, we've got the mouth and the ears and the hair, the baby hair looks pretty cool. I would have loved to see a situation where the hair just runs all the way to the back. But again, by just giving this a single image and then it's generating all of this looks nice. Now for the generated texture mesh, let's see what we have. Ooh, this looks cool. The textures can also be worked on. And uh, I think this is definitely going to be a quick guide for some of those cool stuff. If we go back to the generated mesh, we can proceed to download this and get this into Blender. So with Blender simply opened up right here, I'm just going to go in. Click, drag, drop right in, and you will notice that this exports as GLB, but once you're importing it, it imports with the GLTF 2.0 importer. So you can bring that right in, and this can be used for several instances. Say, for example, you're thinking about creating background models, you can go ahead and bring that in. And of course, if you're also thinking about doing some 3D printing, you can rely on something like this and also create those stuff. If you're looking at ways of creating very cute characters and maybe you just need like a base mesh to start your initial sculpt, this is definitely going to come in very, very handy. And of course, for those who might want to go in and start doing some, you know, rigging and stuff, or maybe you're into game creation and you just need a couple of cool models that you can work with, then of course you can also rely on something like this and start making cool stuff for yourself. This looks pretty interesting. We can definitely go back and rework on the textures, but for the most part, having this as a base mesh is pretty neat. Something else I believe a lot of you guys would want to see is topology. So what we're going to do is just simply go right here, turn on the wireframe, and there you go. This is what we have as topology. Now in tools like ZBrush, you can definitely get cleaner topology. And uh, speaking about ZBrush, ZBrush do not import GLB files. So you definitely need to use Blender and then export that as OBJ or FBX and bring it into ZBrush and then you can get a more cleaner topology by simply using tools like Zero Mesh. And by the way, there's something I think, since we're talking about this, uh, there's something I think a lot of you guys may need to know if you're working with ZBrush. So by default, if you do a simple Zero Mesh, this is what you're going to get. The mesh is just going to, you know, shatter. So what I would suggest that you do is because this is AI and AI is generating these meshes, how you get to walk around it is this simple. I'll possibly do a shot just to explain this for lots of people. However, if you're using ZBrush, what you need to do is to simply go over to your geometry section, go all the way down to where you have your modified topology and weld your points. This is very necessary. You need to weld those points because how the AI creates this is it creates these parts and aligns it. it. It's doing a whole lot of alignment. So that is what it's using to generate this stuff. So once you have that ready, you can now simply go in and rely on the good old zero measure to get the job done. And for our own case, we did go back and use a DynaMesh to increase the resolution. And then we cut out the sections for the eye, did the zero mesh, cleaned up a bit, and then threw in a pair of eyeballs. And that is how you can just go from putting an image, generating that, and creating something. Now for you to do the same remeshing in Blender can be quite interesting. So with Blender simply open right here, if we go over from the object down to the data, make sure you have the object selected. If you scroll down right here, you would notice we've got remesh. So we've got the voxel and the quad. By default, if we switch over to the quad and do the quadric flow remesh, this is not gonna work. So once we click on remesh, nothing. If we go to the voxel and we leave things the way they are 0.1 and hit voxel remesh, of course it's gonna remesh, and if we increase that as well, let's say we make this about 0.01, for example, and remesh this, this, of course, is also going to remesh. However, certain things may not work as expected, which includes if we go over to the quad and do the quad remesh one more time, that may not necessarily work. Reason is because right here, we need to do the same thing that we did in ZBrush, which is merging by distance. So once we merge by distance and we come back, to our quad and we choose to do the remeshing now this is definitely going to work so for you to achieve the remeshing in blender you need to first of all do the voxel remeshing 
switch over to your edit mode, merge by distance and do the quad remesh. This also looks pretty clean. Of course, this can form the basis of various sculpting, but then you'll notice we're losing a bit of data compared to what we have with the default remesh in ZBrush. Now at the same time, you can also use the text prompt to generate a 3D model. In this case, what we're going to say we want to make is a 3D model of an SUV. So we're just going to simply dial that in. For this example, we just want to generate shape only. And we're just going to click on that. And that is going to get us something pretty cool. And there we go. You can see that we now have an SUV model. These you can use for background props. Especially if you're trying to create those, you know, cityscapes where you just want things to be in the background, you can go ahead and do that. And just like we can see here, it's also worth mentioning that you can generate realistic looking models. So maybe there's a sculpt image you like to generate from, or maybe you like to, you know, have a basis for your sculpting. This is also super useful. So from interesting stylized characters to real 3D characters, all the way to creating high resolution texture 3D assets like this, that you can bring into your 3D scene and start using that to beautify your scene, you can now easily start creating stuff. It is also worth mentioning that if you do have a sketch and you like to use your webcam to capture that sketch and use it, this button here simply allows you to do that. And of course, if you like to copy an image from the internet or from anywhere and paste it right here and use it as a means of generation, that is also possible. There's just a lot of things that you can do and you can bring all of these into Blender and start assembling them. And speaking about Blender, there is a brand new Blender add-on that they've just announced. The idea behind this add-on is for you to be able to work with the API and get every single thing that Hunyuan 3D 2.0 has to offer. So with that, you can now start generating your 3D models right inside of Blender by simply using text or generating them via images. You also have the same parameters like we see from Hugging Page. And for those who like to download and start working with these on their local computer, then there's a ton of downloads that are currently available that you can come through and check out. So if you like to download the delight possibly you like to download the paint or maybe the dit all of these pre-trained models are currently available and you can come through and download them for those who like to get the blender add-on this is currently available and you can simply come right here where you can hit the download blender add-on which will bring you right over here where you'll be able to download this and start working with it as well this is a pretty interesting tool and models from a tool like this can be particularly useful for rapid prototyping of 3d assets generating base meshes for further refinement like we've seen creating variation of existing models and also automating repetitive modeling tasks there's just a lot of things that this can be used for and for those who like to create 3d models or possibly you like to print them then this is definitely going to be super useful for you too so this is it tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys in the next one peace